folders for survival. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, so this video isn't so much a video that I'm producing because I like folders for a mainline survival blade, but that I think that I'm making this video because I know that there are those people that will disregard my advice and do it anyways. So what I mean is I don't think that folders are necessarily the best idea when it comes to a survival blade. Of course on this channel we've talked a lot about different survival knives, stuff like the Ontario RTAC 2, the CRK Pacific, the beloved Cold Steel SRK, you know those are gold standards for survival knives and I encourage that instead of trying to and my heavy philosophy is that instead of trying to, you know, find a way to carry a lighter knife and, you know, think that surely because I have this knife, even though it might be a smaller, lighter knife, that I'm prepared for whatever might come my way. You know, realistically, you don't want to skip out on a few or a handful of, you know, survival items. I think they're just simply too important. However, I think a lot of people will hear my advice and still not listen to it anyway. So if you are of that mind, set where a fixed blade survival knife is still not what you want. You absolutely need a folding survival blade. That is who this video is for. And rather than telling you that you're wrong, I'm just going to give you my advice on picking a solid folding survival knife. Now I have the Auto Adamus or the 2750 by Benchmade in my hand and I'm going to be using this as my example though this probably isn't the best of best options it certainly is a good option and kind of meets my requirements but there are of course other options we'll talk about so that is what this video is about so first before we talk about why uh, a folding survival knife is a bad idea or you know what you should look for there are some times where a folding survival knife is necessary primarily when I think about you know building out survival kits like this if you really have to have a survival kit like this and this is all you can really have with you you know making sure that a folding knife or a folding knife is what I would put in a kit like this over a fixed blade simply put because I will show you guys a tops msk or actually let's just go with an se azula here you know would not fit in this it wouldn't even fit in this kit but this se azula this thing right here once again will not fit in this kit but look at how small the blade is on this thing so you pull this thing out it's a big kind of knife uh to carry or it's hard to put in a survival kit like this but when you put it up against something like this auto adamus absolutely dwarfs it in size so this auto adamus of course folded would actually fit in this kit. This SE, even though it is a smaller blade in overall length, would not fit in this kit. And that's simply because it just doesn't fold. So that is where the folding survival knife might need to be important or might need to be a part of your kit. You know, you might have to choose something like this. So in certain circumstances, you may have to go with a folding survival knife, though I just don't think it's the best idea because there are a lot of inherent weaknesses to folding knives just because they are folding in nature. They're designed to fold. So that aside, if you are in a particular situation or of the particular mindset that all you can choose is a folding survival knife, there are a handful of things you should look for. The first and most important should be your locking mechanism. And your locking mechanism should be strong and should be able to take a beating. And there are actually quite a few locking mechanisms out there that are of this way. The axis lock in certain knives, not all of them, but in knives such as the uh, Adamus in its different iterations, whether it be the automatic or the non-automatic. The Auto Adamus has a very thick, actually overbuilt uh, axis lock that is designed to take uh, abuse and punishment. So if you have a overbuilt axis lock, this works very well for a outdoor or kind of survival knife. In addition to this though, if you're looking for a little bit more realistic choice, um, there are knives by Cold Steel that feature the triad lock. That is a very strong lock as well. Um, Spyderco, to a lesser extent, has the compression lock, and the compression lock is another very strong lock. And so those are three of the locks that I would try to aim for if I am looking for a folding blade 
for survival. So it has a triad, an overbuilt axis, or a strong compression lock from Spyderco. So that gives you some reasonable option, you know, things like the so that gives you an idea of what you can look for and what kind of knives that I would gun for. The next should be that you want a blade that is ergonomically uh, satisfying. You want something that can, you know, hold, that you can hold comfortably for long periods of time and that will fill your hand and that works with especially gloves. Oftentimes outside we will be holding, you know, our knives with gloves so you want to make sure that above all it's not so much comfort but being that you have a large enough handle that can hold that you can hold on to with gloves uh, an idea or kind of a a kind of example of this is once again the Adamus is a very good example you can definitely hold this with with or without gloves something that you might run into an issue with is something like this Benchmade 556 where I can hold this blade pretty well without gloves but you can see that this handle is basically maxed out for me if I put on gloves and then try to hold this handle it's gonna be a different story and it's not gonna fit in my hand quite to the same extent so you want to make sure that the handle of your blade is functional and that you can get a good grip with it with or without gloves and in multiple you know if it's wet if it's dry you know different types of situations and scenarios the next of course is moving over to the blade now the biggest disadvantage with folders is that of course a functional folder has to have the blade length smaller than the handle length so you are dealing with a naturally smaller blade length. However, that blade still does need to be around 3.8 to around 3.5 inches. I believe this one is around 3.5, maybe a little bit less. And so with that, you want, just want to make sure that your blade length is large enough for you to be able to do realistic camp tasks. So feather sticking, striking a ferro rod off the spine, processing game animals, processing natural resources such as chaga or other funguses, that's what you're going to be doing with your blade primarily. And so you have to make sure that your blade can do light batoning, fire starting, and resource processing. And so that's what you want to aim for in a steel. You want a steel that's going to be worthy and hold an edge. You know, you want something that's not just going to go dull. And, you know, you might laugh at this statement, but there are a lot of blades made, or folding blades, that are made out of HCR 13 MOV, 420 uh, high carbon, and these different. Um, steels and so they're just not the best steels to choose for you know outdoor edges because realistically this is a survival situation you may not have good access to a sharpening system so you want something that will naturally hold an edge for a while it doesn't have to be a crazy super steel like this is cpm crew air but it doesn't have to be a crazy steel like this even something like 154 cm or something along those lines can be good enough but you just don't want to choose a notably poor steel for edge retention this is something that you're going to be betting your life on so make sure that it's something that's good and honestly you know when it comes back to it some people might complain and say you know matthew you know why do you choose a or why are you showing off a 300 dollars folding knife you know for survival and i say that you know honestly if it's your life on the line you probably want the best tool you can get so maybe it means going out and buying the $300 folder I mean maybe you don't need the automatic function of this knife but it is still important to have a folder that you can use to keep you safe and alive in a survival situation so whether it's a folder or a fixed blade you know don't be afraid to actually spend the real money to get the real product to keep your butt alive in a situation so anyways that's really all I have to say I still don't really recommend fixed blade or sorry I still don't really recommend folders for survival fixed blades are way better in many ways and once again if you had that set amount of money like let's just say $300 I'd recommend going getting something like the RTAC 2 or the SRK or even the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific you know just something that is a fixed blade but if you absolutely can't or absolutely won't this is at least the guidelines to picking the best type of knife for survival so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.